Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming to another video. All right, so the Lakers dropped a game in the Philadelphia's arena. Uh, in the Philadelphia's arena. A Wells Fargo Center, I believe it was. Um, it was uh, quite quite boring, to be honest with you. I, I didn't really take a whole lot from this basketball game, man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I think the one thing that I can really, really say that, I, that, I, that stood out was just how great AD played. I thought this was about the best game I've seen him play in about two, two years. Um, cause he, even though he's had some games, where he's had bigger stats. He was just moving, you know, he had, he had his defense going, he had his offense going. He was doing exactly what he needed to do to be effective on both sides of the floor, four blocks, uh, 30 plus points, double digit boards. It was just, if, if anything you could take from this game, if nothing else, rather then you could honestly say you got the best version of AD tonight, uh, 34 minutes he gave us. We did not have him on minutes restriction, which I thought was the right decision. And uh, I was just extremely pleased with Anthony Davis. I, I told you guys, when, when I see the real Anthony Davis, I'll let you know. Well, we saw the real Anthony Davis tonight in Philadelphia, and I certainly do not think anything bad about his performance at all. He was everything we needed him to be. Now, he did hurt his wrist in that game, but he thugged it out, played through it, um, and, and we're very happy that he's going to be all right. Um, other than that, to be honest with you, it wasn't a whole lot to like for the Los Angeles Lakers. It really wasn't. You got to give credit to the Philadelphia 76ers. They played good basketball. They had about four or five players in double figures. Andre Drummond gave him 10 rebounds. Um, George Niang gave him about 15 points. Uh, Joel Embiid did the Joel Embiid thing as we knew he would. He seemed to get the ball about 80% of the time, to be completely honest with you. Philadelphia would not be a team I'd want to watch every night because I just don't really love the one-man band thing. But Joel Embiid definitely put the team on his shoulders once again and and showed out. Um they had some good stuff out of four Kun Korkmaz. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly, but he caught a nice lob early in the game. Tyrese Maxey showed out. He had really nice numbers dishing the ball around and scoring as well, continuing to get into our paint. Ultimately, the Lakers really just, they kept up with this team from a stats perspective, but where we really hurt ourselves was just poor three-point shooting and field goal shooting. However, one thing that definitely stood out is, this is the second game in a row where the Lakers did not miss a free throw. I know for a fact I've never seen that before. And so that definitely deserves some mention. Two games in a row, 100% free throw shooting as a team. That is absolutely and utterly phenomenal. So, obviously we didn't have Bron James tonight. You guys already know that. Uh, he, he had some knee soreness, tried to give it a go. It wasn't happening. Tomorrow he's questionable as well. I think they may, they may sit him for that one too in Charlotte. But, you know, other than that, man, honestly, I didn't really take much from this game. I, I really did have link trouble when I was watching the highlights. I was just losing interest. It just was not a good game to watch if you're a Laker fan. I mean, even when we have games where we lose, you still stay inter interested and engaged. This one did not keep my interest at all. Um, and and I, I don't think I've said that very much this year. I can I can honestly say that it doesn't happen very often. But the fact of the matter was, there was no king out there. And, um, you know, we just kind of didn't get a whole lot of good from really much of anybody um T Taylor Horton Tucker's uh struggles continued he was awful tonight uh, Austin Reeves did not have a good game at all he was awful tonight Malik Monk struggled tonight uncharacteristically he didn't shoot the ball well uh it was just a whole lot of that man we didn't you know we we tried stuff but it just wasn't working we did see some sequences that we liked um particularly in that second quarter I saw some some lineups that were really giving us some good stuff we were double teaming well Stanley Johnson played phenomenally mostly both most of the best uh ball played as a team usually had Stanley Johnson as a part of it uh he was doing a good job of just trying to stay active keeping his active hands going moving laterally staying with people just doing things he needed to do to be effective defensively uh, Russell Westbrook gave us 20 points, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't really have a lot of assistive boards, but he definitely had a lot of turnovers. So, you know, we got the worst of him tonight. Uh, he shot better than normal, but he just his his basketball IQ just did not serve us very well tonight. And that's, that's, that's the best and most respectful way I can say that. He just didn't have it tonight like that. Uh, from a decision-making standpoint... Uh, some of the turnovers and stuff like that, you just you just shake your head. You just see more of the same. It's not a whole lot of uh, great uh, to go by there. So, um, yeah, man, this 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 was a game you definitely want to just say for the film. What we want to see is this from Anthony Davis. So, anytime you may not see the best from Anthony Davis, you give him this film and you say this is what we want from you. 
I think the best thing to say in regards to that too is the fact that the rest really helped him. Even though he was dealing with a knee injury, you can clearly see whatever he needed to do in terms of getting away from the game, uh, sorting some things out on his own to try to get re-engaged and, and, and get some rest and get his body back into you know, shape. He's gotten that from this injury. Um, and because that's what it was, he was just going through the motions in the first half of the season. He didn't look like he was having fun. His body didn't look like it was really taking well to what was asked of him. He just looked worn out, tired, and sluggish. Coming back from this injury, he's jogging well. He's blocking shots. He's doing dunks. He's doing all that stuff. He's hitting mid-range jumpers. He's back looking like himself. So if I can say anything at all about tonight, it was that I can finally sing the praises of Anthony Davis. And I've been waiting to do that for about a year and a half now. I kid you not. So this was the best game I've seen from him in about two years. And that's exactly what I took from this game. Everything else, toss away. Uh, Carmelo Anthony got into it with some fans in this game. Typical Philadelphia bull crap. And they, he got them thrown out. It was two sets of fans he got into it with, believe it or not, at the same time. I don't know how the hell that happened. But, you know, they, they, they were ejected and so on and so forth. Um, anything else that really stood out about this game? Truthfully, you guys, not really. Not really, man. I, I just didn't get a whole lot from it. Um, Tyrese Maxey is continuing to remind me of how fast of a player he is, how much better he is. Uh, the, the announcers mentioned that he does not. Uh, he had never played point guard before this year, which makes it even more impressive how he's able to facilitate and kind of work that into his equation. You got to give Doc Rivers credit on how he's coaching that kid and getting him to, to fill that role. Um you know what I mean? That's 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 it, man. I mean, I usually have a whole lot to say, but I just think the Lakers without LeBron James kind of took the luster out of this game. You come into it knowing that we're not going to have a successful game. You come into it knowing what to expect, and they just give you what you expect. That's what I got. I got what I expected. You know, the rotations were a bit better tonight, but not great. I, I You know, I, I, I would love to say that you know, Frank Vogel was the big problem tonight, like I always like to. But I, I can't say I took from it tonight that he, he was really the problem. The issue was just guys not playing well. Like, they just... Some of the guys you expect to give us good production really did not take their game on the road tonight. And that's that's what I could say. Anthony Davis didn't have a whole lot of help. Um, granted, they were going up against a very talented team defensively. That was another thing. They did a great job against us. Guys like Matisse Thibel. Uh, whose game is starting to grow on the offensive end. You got to really, really keep an eye on Matisse uh, because if he could start to score c comfortably, his defense is always going to carry him through this league. Uh, so he was definitely somebody that stood out on their side of the floor. Um, yeah, that's that's what I can honestly say. They did a good job of defending us. I thought we did a pretty good job of defending Joel Embiid at times, particularly when uh, Stanley Johnson was on the floor and Anthony Davis was on the floor together. You saw good sequences where they would double team. But I thought that Frank could have asked for the double team a bit more tonight. We just did not double Joel enough for my liking. We did in that first quarter, first half. That second half, we really didn't do it. The third quarter was our uh, Achilles heel once again. We kind of had like a, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a six-point deficit in the at that halftime moment came out and let them go off on a, a big time run to, to to clear out that third quarter uh and that's really where we we, we got uh got beat so our, our our third quarter um woes continue and and i just would love to uh see some improvement there but it's just you know when you do things the same way you're gonna get the same results and so you know, I, that's that's the end of the conversation in regards to that. Uh, what else? There was something else that came to mind. Um, so, as I've said this before in a video, maybe about some random month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, who knows. But I've said this before and I'm going to say it now. THT and Russell Westbrook should not, on be, not be on the floor together at any given moment. Ever. Never. If, if one is on the floor, you don't play the other. Um... And the reason being is because they both make the same type of mistakes. And when you have one player who's going to make that type of mistake and then you have to also deal with another, you're going to find yourself really behind the eight ball. And that kind of can snatch the momentum away from the team, snatch the energy away from the defense, snatch away the, the intensity from player to player because you're just sitting there watching these guys make bonehead mistakes, taking bad shots and things of that nature. You just get to a point where you understand that you can only put up with one of them. It's only one of those type of players that you can honestly deal with in one lineup. 
So in my opinion, I think we need to try to make sure that they're never on the floor together. On the other hand, I would love Frank to try running AD and Dwight Howard on the floor together. Now, I know y'all are saying the spacing ain't that great. I know it can do a lot of things when you have Dwight Howard out there. But at the end of the day, if you ignore all of the stuff that we think we know about what should be done in regards to small ball lineups and how best to run it, you look at what's going on out there with the Los Angeles Lakers and you honestly say, AD is a natural four, Dwight is a natural five. It stands to reason why you would have one hell of a size advantage every single night if you play them together. You don't have to do it all game long, but you do try that and see what you can get out of it against certain lineups. Because you look at over there in Cleveland, you see what dynamic they have with Allen and Mobley, and that's exactly why they're beating the heck out of people. It's because they have that rim protection, that rebounding at all times. Both of those players are gifted defensively. They're both long. They both catch lobs. They both block shots on a regular basis. Those are things that Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis both do as well. We can get a little taste of that energy and give ourselves a bit of a different type of look against teams, and I bet you 100% it'll be a hell of a lot better than starting Trevor Reza at the four spot. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like the stuff that we try. You see what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you can you have choices to imagine certain things and you try them. But how about we imagine some things that actually give us an advantage? You know, once again, we tried running Avery Bradley out there. Again, Avery Bradley is not that guy anymore. And this coach of ours is going to continue to just try them out there at the starting lineup because he gives him a little bit better defense than what he would expect from somebody else. But he don't give you nothing else. He ain't hitting no shots. He can barely dribble the ball. It's like you you just want the Lakers to fire Frank Vogel so you can start seeing looks that don't look like the stuff he imagines. And so I'm going to continue to say that. But all in all, you know, that's just what it is. Until you make the change, you're going to see the same stuff. Now, um, I'm hopeful that the Lakers can find a way Tomorrow, we're going up against Charlotte, and Charlotte's a team who dropped 150-something points on somebody yesterday. LaMelo Ball is this basketball genius, basically. You got uh, Kelly Oubre coming off almost a 50-point game. You got um, Miles Ma- Ma- Bridges, who's playing at a near all-star level. You got James Booknight, the lottery pick, who's starting to find his confidence. You got a lot of things going on in that Charlotte game. I don't expect that we're going to be able to go into Charlotte tomorrow with no LeBron James and have any success, just like we weren't able to go into Philly tonight and have any success without LeBron James. So him playing is going to determine how this goes to some degree, especially since AD played so many minutes tonight, which is another thing I wanted Frank to kind of uh, not do. Uh, there was a situation tonight where we were, I think we were down probably about 15 with like seven minutes to go in the fourth. At that point, I wanted us to, to sit AD. I mean, if he was on minutes restriction two games ago, why in the hell is he out there when the game seventeen when you have a seventeen point spread and the game is already over on the road? I mean, I just, I just don't like his choices, man. I don't like those choices. Those are bad decisions, and we were able to get away with it because AD played well and he got out of the game pretty much healthy, with the exception of the wrist injury that hurt that he hurt in the first quarter. But all in all, if a guy is coming off injury and he's supposed to be on minutes restriction, he should not be playing in garbage time. So, Frank's choices. It is what it is, man. So, chalk this up as another loss. Uh, you know, Lakers lose by, well, I think it was 17 points. And it was all very predictable, you know. I, I obviously, we feel like we could have had a much better shot at it if we would have had LeBron James' production. Uh, and I think LeBron James is going to look at the tape and, 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 and this one's going to haunt him because of it. Especially since his boy AD's played his, the best ball he's played in, in about two years. So, you, you, you consider the, what this game represented in terms of it being on the road and going up against such a player like Joel B. And then you look at the fact that Brown wasn't able to go and you just know that that production would have made a difference tonight. So I think that's what I took away from it, man. Um, we just missed the King, man. And all the greatness that he provides, you take it for granted. And when you don't have it, it's really hard to score out there. And that's what we saw tonight. Guys just not being able to put the rock in the hole. Um, you know, and in three point shots, man, I mean, come on, Frank. At some point in time, you got to tell guys to just not take bad shots, man. It gets to a point where you, you're shooting 20% from the three point line on the road. It's like, how do you give yourself an opportunity if that's going to continue? You just can't, you know? So, I don't know if we would have done everything right. We still would have won this game because, quite honestly, we're just not better than this team. Um, and that's the reality of it. I said that at the beginning of the day. When I thought Braun was playing, when I found that he wasn't playing, and now it's all the same. 
we were going to lose. <laughs> it's just, it's just you know, some matchups are not very good for us. And this going up against Philly has never been very good for us uh, since Joel and uh, Ben Simmons and all those guys were put together. The Lakers have historically had a lot of trouble going into Philadelphia, so this was no exception. Um, what else, man? I tell you, just so disappointed with this franchise this year. It's just like we can't seem to get a good break either. It's not just the disappointment of what we can control, but the stuff that's outside of it, you know? Um, Bron not being able to go on a night like tonight. It's like, wow, wow. What a wasted performance for Anthony Davis. Um, so this is one of those games where, you know, you really, really, really start asking yourself questions about Russell Westbrook and how you handle him. Like, because tonight, even though he shot better, you know, the shot was pretty much falling. It was like 8 for 15 or something like that, which is fair. Those turnovers and just some of the decision-making. I mean, he had a, a sequence in the second quarter. It frustrated me so much because he was given a three-point shot. The defense wasn't playing nowhere near him. He takes a step forward toward Danny Green, the defender, and then shoots just the most off-brick mid-range shot you ever see. I mean, you had more space with the three-point shot. And the funny thing is, with the trajectory he was shooting with, how strong he was shooting the ball. He probably would have made the three. It's just the decision making, man. He just and, and some of the passes. I mean, he he telegraphs his pass about as worse, as bad as anybody on the team. But it wasn't just that. You saw a lot of telegraph passes tonight. You know, it's like we didn't respect the talent of their defensive players. When Matisse Thibault's on the floor. Don't try to dribble into into him. You're not going to have a lot, a lot of success there. We did have a sequence where. Uh, uh, Russell Westbrook drove past him and laid, laid the ball up earlier in, I think it was in the first quarter. Oh, I thought that was a very good take. But then we had another sequence where, you know, we were on a fast break, but it wasn't really a fast break because their defense was already set. It's like we, we didn't get beat down the court, but Russell Westbrook, uh, you know, at the pace he's running, he's running straight into the defense. Had a situation where Anthony Davis was wide open at the three-point line. He could have reset the ball that way, but instead he continues to try to bull through and, and, and bang against a triple team basically of guys who are all taller than him in the paint i just don't understand how you play this game for so long and still uh and, and see the game this way that's that's what frustrates me it's hard to um it's it's hard to to uh, properly assess russell westbrook because you know he's a hall of famer you've seen him play great but then you see his decision making and you say boy i, I swear to you it's about the lowest iq on the team like it's real bad fam it's really bad. Between him and THT, you're sitting there wondering how these guys even made it this far in the league, man. How they even got to the NBA. Hey, I, see, I kid you not, you guys. So, like, my frustration level is is pretty high with Russell Westbrook because on one hand, I'm telling people we definitely don't need to trade him for John Wall. And a pick, you don't ever want to do that. But then you look at a game like tonight and you say if John Wall was on the floor, we probably wouldn't have some of the problems we had tonight. Like, some of those turnovers, some of those lost possessions – if John Wall's healthy and on this team, that doesn't happen. And so it's just like, I don't know, man. I don't. I would never make that trade. I'm not changing my mind on that. But I'll tell you this. Russell Westbrook turned up the heat on my desire to get him off this team once again. And so with 18 games left at this point, we're on a back-to-back, -back, probably going to lose tomorrow. Um, I really hope the Lakers are able to pull off a deal that ain't that John Wall trade. You know, get this contract out of here. Try to f create some flexibility. I don't care if we get back anything we want. You don't have to be no player or nothing. We just need to trim ourselves down to two max contracts so we can get back to the business of being a championship caliber team. Because as long as this guy's on the roster with his contract and his turnovers, we are going to be behind the eight ball and we're never going to win a championship. And that's just what I know. Bron knows it too. So it's just, we got to do this, man. We can't take the, we can't take the wall deal because that at the end of the day, that's the same contract. It provides us no flexibility and wall is a less healthier player. But we know we know, no, that we can't win with Russell Westbrook. He's going, he doesn't value possessions properly. Um, okay, let's get off him. Carmelo Anthony, his shot was falling. But one thing that's starting to be very consistent for me, and I'm starting to realize this, is very, very low-key, Carmelo Anthony be doing stuff to hurt the team a lot, man. Some of, the, some, of the, some of his fouls, that's what I'll say. Some of the fouls that Carme Carmelo Anthony picks up, he will pick up at the worst time. And I'll tell you guys the truth. This is something that's come to mind with me. And I, and I know this ain't going to come off the right way, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I can totally see why these players don't have championship rings, man. 
I can literally tell you right now that I saw sequences on that floor tonight that showed me exactly why Carmelo Anthony don't have as many wins as he should and why Russell Westbrook don't have as many wins as he should. Those guys do certain things that play right into the defense's hand. The way they play the ball, the game sometimes, some of the shot selection they take, I don't think they realize exactly how losing those plays actually are. Some of the shot selection Carmelo takes, he got down there one time and just jacked up a quick early shot clock three-point shot before the defense had even before the rest of the team had even got down the floor. It wasn't nothing but blue jerseys under there to rebound that thing. I'm like, bro, how in the hell do you give yourself an opportunity for success in that possession if the shot doesn't make? Like, you literally leave yourself a 10% chance for that to be a good possession because either the shot's going in or it's going back there in their direction. That's not, that's not good odds. Basketball is a game of odds, and you want to give yourself as many possessions as possible and as many quality possessions as possible. And teams who know how to do that are often the ones that are going to win. More ball movement side to side, more player movement. These are the things that help basketball be as beautiful of a game as it is. But when you have players that come down and throw possessions away just so they can either get stats or just because it just comes into their mind to do so, that is low basketball IQ stuff, and it is why players do not get wins. And you can see it. These are superstars who never won championships. Why? Because they do things that literally lose games. And somebody needs to be honest about that. And it's going to be me. So both Carmelo Anthony and Russell Westbrook need to dig deep and figure out what they can do to make these quality, these possessions more quality. In my opinion, go back and watch some more Spurs highlights from the old days when those Tony Parker... They will, that's the team, to be honest with you. Between that team and my Laker team that I grew up watching, those are the two teams that taught me exactly what basketball is actually supposed to look like when it's played properly. And I will not deviate from that understanding. Ball movement, player movement, good defense, quality possessions, and rebounding and rim protection. If you don't have those principles in place, you're going to lose. I don't care how good of a shooter you have. It doesn't matter how great your guys dribble. That stuff don't matter. You need those principles in place quality possession so that's what i have for you tonight more frustrating uh energy from from a frustrated laker fan who uh as everyone else had high hopes for the beginning of this season but at this point i have no faith in this team uh none at all the only thing i really want from this team is to just salvage the health of those three superstars man that is the key thing for me and i don't want those guys to end this season hurt I want those guys' value to be as is or higher by the end of the season. That is really where my head is at because everything else is just nonsense. You know, we can go for the rah-rah, all this, but I'm more so about the franchise as a whole, and I want to see us have a future. And right now, that future is very much in jeopardy because of the volatility of our franchise and the decision-making of our coaching staff and ultimately the lack of talent on our roster. So that's what it is, man. PDF 44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out. Oh, Game ball goes to AD, man. I'm giving the game ball to, to a losing player uh, because he gave me what it is I've been wanting to see from him for almost two years. And that's a game where I can honestly say AD did his job and made me happy. And that's what I saw. So AD was not the problem. He gets the game ball tonight. BDF 44. Peace.